My handling of daylight savings time is meriting me to be tired. I have been so irresponsible to what time I should be going to bed, with what time I should be getting up, and St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that merit is a thing that implies a certain equality of justice. So it is just that my irresponsibility of staying up, scrolling, reading, doing things that are not sleep when I know that the morning is going to be here much sooner than it typically is, um, I'm meriting myself unworthy of having a good night's sleep. I'm meriting myself unworthy of feeling well rested. The same does not go for Christ's willingness to suffer, right? He suffers up front and therefore he, by his passion, is merited to be exalted. So he has a glorious resurrection. He ascends into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And there's a power of his judgment because he has been the ruler. He is the one who has the final say of who is going to be led into the kingdom of God or not. I can't say that every type of suffering merits this type of exaltation, right? Some suffering is brought about for ourselves, such as me not going to bed at an appropriate time, knowing that we've just moved ahead an hour and, you know, 8.30 is actually what used to be 7.30. And in the morning, what is going to be 8 o'clock is going to be 9 o'clock. The whole days, they're going to shift. And my children will be up at different hours. I am going to be tired. It is guaranteed at this point. And their sleep schedules are going to continue to be off kilter. It's all brought about by myself. Whereas Christ's suffering was not. He willingly accepted it, but it was also for a greater glory. There's nothing greater glory about skipping out on sleep. But as it is, we can trust that the Lord can help us continue to learn how to take proper care of our bodies so that we get enough sleep, so that we can actively participate in his grace and be joyful because when we lack sleep, I think it's very difficult to have the highest level of patience or the highest level of kindness. Maybe for some people, apathy just sets in with tiredness. For me, I get a little bit grumpy and I just, I really commend Christ. I, I think he does get upset with his apostles, right? He says, why can't you stay awake with me just for one hour when he's trying to pray in Gethsemane, right? He's saying, why can't you stay awake with me? What are you doing? Why are you falling asleep? Come, the hour is at hand, right? He, ha he has this desire for his apostles to be awake with him at this particular moment and still feels somewhat defeated. And then Peter acts out of anger, right? He cuts the guard's ear off. And instead of retaliating as well, Jesus restores. He heals the ear and puts the ear back on the soldier. And they still arrest him. And while all the apostles scatter, the, um, the Gospel of Mark actually includes that there was a person whose garment was torn off, who was wearing a linen cloth or something, and it was torn off and they ran away naked. And it's... Um, proposed that that could perhaps be Mark himself and that he didn't identify himself due to the embarrassment that he must have felt. But nonetheless, they all run, they scatter. Jesus had wanted them to be with him in community and continuity of spirit, and they weren't. And so I do think that there is, you know, specifically in regard to sleep, a level of, um, you know, willingness that we have to have to have a disciplined schedule but this idea that God uses our sleep for his glory and he uses our awakeness for his glory we are called to be present we are called to be stewards of our body and of the things around us and so I just um maybe we can walk on this together as we kind of adjust to daylight savings. I presume that's a worldwide thing, is it not? Or is that only in the United States? I feel like I should know that, whether all of us are going through daylight savings right now, or if that's just 
like a Western Hemisphere thing. I don't know, but it's definitely going to be brighter in the evening for later and darker in the mornings, which again does not facilitate or lend itself toward waking up earlier. But as it is, I will be awake in the morning again to chat with you guys and see what your inputs are on today's podcast. Um, this is, like I said, a new experience for me, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to do it. And I'm also looking forward to just everything that this may bring about. I'm getting different insights in my mind about uh, integrating more parts of my life and allowing Christ's love in my life, how it actualizes itself to come forward in some of these discussions. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes once Lent is up and we're kind of done going through Aquinas' Lenten meditations. But as it is right now, I think that my my sole purpose in what I'm sharing is to guide people to Christ, to plant seeds of Christ. There are plenty of people showing you how to bake the perfect sourdough loaf. There are plenty of people trying to tell you how to raise your kids, how to discipline them. There are plenty of people trying to tell you how to do these things. And for me, it's just like, submit your heart to the Lord and everything else will follow after. Um, He will put the right tools in your toolbox. And as long as you're seeking him and being obedient and responsible to what it is that he's given you, all of those things will fall into place. So... I just hope that that happens for you today. I hope it happens for me too, because I have lots of things that I could be a little bit more responsible about. And I know that that's one of the highest callings from God in my life is to simply be responsible, which is not always as easy as it may come out of the mouth. It may not be as easy as it sounds. So I just pray that he continues to soften and humble and strengthen my heart. And that would be my prayer for you as well. And uh, may it be my prayer for those surrounding you too. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in today. I look forward to chatting with you again tomorrow. God bless.